let's take a look at what we call a core belief system in break method. When we actually do all of this work to figure out what went in again to this glasses lens, if you will, what we're really looking at is an origin source belief, which is typically formed between two and five. Honestly, it might be earlier. And this is created by the repetitive adversely experienced, um, adversely perceived experiences in your childhood. So the repetition is important because your brain's not just going to create a rule with one exposure. Whatever you're exposed to repetitively that your brain experiences is adverse. And remember that adverse doesn't have to mean like physical abuse or sexual abuse. It can literally just mean anything other than innocence, curiosity, or love. A child comes into the world. I like the way the Taoists describe it as the poo, P-U. It's an uncarved block of wood. A child comes in very like soft and malleable. And all they really want is to be curious, right? Explore their environment and figure out what it all means. You know, their brain is firing rapidly. They're innocent, right? They don't come in jaded to the world and full of other past memories to kind of relate. Well, this person's angry, but they're not as angry as this. So I'm probably not in danger, right? There's no ability to relate back to the past. And they just want to experience love. So anything other than those three things, which I think we can all safely say we experienced with repetitive nature in childhood, those are what create these source beliefs. It can be it can be as simple as repetitively fighting with a sibling or even the birth of a sibling or a parent that doesn't seem to ever have time for you when you're asking for clarification of something or you're getting disciplined for something that you don't understand. You don't have to be physically abused or sexually molested to have experienced childhood trauma. That's a very important takeaway here. So whatever happens in that earliest time frame, obviously we do a, we call it the source belief timeline process and break method. This helps really lay the foundation for how this all works together. So those are typically between two and five. Then you form an adaptive source belief. This is typically formed between five and 10. And this is created by the adaptive responses to protect you from whatever that repetitive adverse experience is. I was thinking about this in the car this morning with my daughter who her origin source belief, and I'm going to throw all the source beliefs out here to choose from in just a moment. Her origin source belief is that everyone will abandon her. Obviously, her dad passed away when she was two, and daddy was there, and then daddy was gone, and mommy was working a lot. So her origin source belief is absolutely, everyone will always abandon me. And you can see that the way she adapted to try to not let people abandon her is to hold it all together for everyone. And I watched this even with my fiance yesterday. So, you know, in general, everyone has their, their temper tantrum moments, right? And it's very clear to me, my daughter's nonverbal, so she does sign language. And I saw that she was very intently observing an interaction between my fiance and I, and she looked at him and she saw that he was getting increasingly angry and kind of like distraught and like just tough looking. And she like went and tapped on him and she was like, I love you. I'm sorry. I love you. I'm sorry. It's like, okay, this has nothing to do with you. But in an effort to hold it all together, she's already learned at her young age, even with sign language to go try to like boost somebody up and tell them all these good things about them so that they won't leave. Right. Instead of and imagine that this is now coming at her. This is now, if I don't nip this in the bud, which believe me, we got to chit chat about it. She will learn going into adulthood that when somebody's angry, you just try to placate them and try to like build them up. Like, well, what if in some moments they don't deserve that? Or what if building them up is not actually what they need to break through whatever this moment that's angering them is? So this is essentially how that origin and adaptive comes into play. It's like whatever that repetitive deep fear and experience is. And then, well, if I do this and this and this, then I'll, I'll protect myself from that. But you find that no matter what, you keep creating the cycle over and over again. So when we look at the actual definition of a source belief, these are the illogical and subjective beliefs we form about our environment and how we exist in our environment. And remember, it's a faulty experiment because our parents set up all the variables. And yet we go out subconsciously and we recreate these variables to experience the same, you know, basically the same set of, of um, answers every single time, right? So let's say there's a, a variable A, variable B, which gives us 
C. When we go out into our adult lives, even though variable A and variable B were absolutely controlled by our parents, we might go out into our adult environment now and be like, mm, you're enough like A to go in here, you're just enough like B to go in here. So C, it always ends up like C. But this isn't actually real because your glasses are on. So you're seeing something as A and B, but when I teach you how to take it off, you might be like, oh fuck, that's like an H and a J. That's not gonna make C. But you won't realize it until you learn how to take the glasses off. So that is what we're going to do. So these are the most common source belief variations that I've found in my work, which again, now, if we factor in maybe, this has been at least 3,000 students that have gone through this particular course, and these are the most common source beliefs. So again, let's say you pick from this list. Here, you would also find your origin and your adaptive. For me, I also, which is not surprising given my daughter's uh, source belief pattern, mine also was everyone will abandon me for my origin, and my adaptive was I have to hold it all together. My fiance is number three. I will always be rejected, and his adaptive is I have to be in control to receive love these two often end up together as we're going to find out when we go into symbiotic dysfunction so i'm going to give you two minutes to take a look at these and what i find to be the the quick and dirty way of doing this if you look at let's say zero to five and you were to try to summarize what that repetitive adverse experience was summarize it in two sentences and then look at this and say what was the first rule that i learned about this two sentence summary okay you pick that one. Then you take a look at, you know, ages five to 10. What was the way that I tried to avoid this outcome? Then you pick your adaptive. Okay. Um, quick note about number seven, the life is chaos and or has no meaning and other existential offshoots. This one always, if, it, if it's really truly there, it's almost always in number one position. So in that origin position and it almost always, and honestly, in my thousands of people, without exception, ends up in either severe drug or alcohol addiction and or suicidal ideation. So if you don't experience any of those two things, this one's probably not truly the one for you. Okay. So if everyone wants to just take two minutes, type in the numbers of your origin adaptive. So some people, good job, Kiana. Kiana already did exactly what I was going to ask next, so way to be on top of it. Everyone take a minute here, try to come up with that summary statement and take your best educated guess and send me what you think your origin number is and then either an and and then the, the adaptive number or number common number. Go for it. Okay. Lots of twos and ones as to be expected. So when I did this in the prison system, 90% of everybody was two and then one. Um, we've got four and then five, four and one, four, two and five. Yep, two and five is a big one. Four, got it, three and four, one and seven, four and five. Nice, everybody. So remember, when we look at our glasses, right? Now what we're going to see is that in these glasses, the very, let's say they're bifocal, right? Where they've got like the line. The first thing that our brain is going to experience is going to be whatever that origin belief is. So let's say any, if you look at any scenario that's happened in your life over the last, I don't know, three days, and I know it's the holiday season, so shit's probably getting wild for you at home. Think about whatever that origin is and think about how your brain, if you actually take a look at how everything transpired, how your brain actually was acting with that in the forefront. Like, oh, fuck, really that was driving a lot of my behavior and how I was leaving things. I was afraid to get rejected or I was afraid to get abandoned or I just, I thought people just kind of leave, right? So especially during the holidays, holding it all together or constantly feeling like you're not enough for disappointment or trying to control every single person if you're the control to be safe or receive love, 
this is going to be driving all of your behavior over the last few days. And then if you look at the adaptive, you can see where this is again, like you're probably going to resonate more in your adult life with your adaptive source belief because essentially you've gotten so well versed in just like immediately hitting that adaptive because you're trying to avoid the pain. But the funny thing is that you're assuming that the pain is coming so you immediately default to the adaptive, but in doing this process and assuming that the pain is coming, we actually create the pain. And that is the problem.